this video is about loan life cover ratios. To be honest with you, I never liked this LLCR ratios. I mean, I cannot find, you know, the usage of it. I say, okay, I we have this uh, debt service coverage ratios, which I covered in my previous post. And we calculate that. And these are like ratios, which are more like a shorter term for lenders to evaluate the financial viability of the project, the debt service capacity of the project. And for a longer term uh, metrics like LLCR, I am more comfortable with the average DSCR. And so that's why, you know, I was like, that, that's something that I always calculate in my financial models, the LLCR. And uh, because it's always, it's, I have not even come across one deal which the LLCR is not mentioned in the term sheet as one of the covenants. So that's something that you need to include in your models. And today I told myself, I'm going to have a fresh and new look at this ratio. It's like I don't know anything about it, all my background and history about this LLCR. I'm going to put it aside and I'm going to have a completely fresh and new look at this ratio. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to tap LLCR and see what I can get for the definition. So what I get when I type it, the first thing that came to in my search is the in Investopedia, which tells us about the meaning of LLCR. Okay, so I, I let you read it. And so, okay, so from this explanation and from the other things that I read online, I know that it's a ratio that the lenders, they use to evaluate and monitor the project, right? And it is basically a long-term loan, a long-term metric, because it looks at the cash flow available at each point to, towards the end of the life of the loan. Okay, perfect. So, so far, so good. Now I want to see um, what's really how to calculate it. And, and if, if I want to know how to calculate it, I always go to like a, a loan agreement. And that's where I have the exact legal definition of the any kind of uh, term that I'm looking for. And this time I'm going to type, I typed in one of my loan agreement from one of my real projects, I typed LLCR in the search and this is this came as the definition of LLCR in the term sheet in the loan agreement so this is one definition and you, you can see that here it says that the LLCR is just the ratio of the present value of future cash flow for such a calculation period and there is another definition also for calculation period that you need to go and look into it in the loan agreement and divide it by the aggregate principal amount of the loan outstanding at the corresponding calculation date okay so if you want to just translate it in the mathematical form you will see that the LLCR is nothing but the NPV of future cash flow at any point in time divided by the outstanding debt balance. Another thing with the LLCR is that there are different type of definition of LLCR. So whenever you are engaged in the deal, always ask what is your definition of LLCR from your lenders, from the bank, when you are in a meeting or when you are writing to them and you're communicating to them, ask them for what is their definition of LLCR? And I would even go further and ask them for an example to send them to ask for an Excel sheet with an example of how they want you to calculate LLCR. That's going to make your life much easier because as I told you, there are different interpretation and different um, basically uh, definition of LLCR. Okay. So it's better to have a clear view of what they want from you so that you can model it accordingly. Okay, so uh, now uh, I want to take you through a financial model 
and I want to show you I'm just going to walk you through I'm not going to do it for you it's going to waste your time I'm just going to walk you through one of my financial models and tell you how I calculated LLCR okay so this is an extract from one of my project finance models and we're going to calculate LLCR here together so I already collected all the elements that I need in order to calculate LLCR I am just left with a couple of minor calculations so the first thing I need I need the as you can see here in the formula for calculating LLCR I need the net present value of future cash flow so when you talk about present value you need a discount rate okay what is the discount rate that you need to use for the calculation of LLCR? It is typically what we call the weighted average cost of debt. If you have multiple tranches of debt, if you have only one tranche, one uh, debt, then that's going to be basically the interest rate on that tranche that you have. However, if you have multiple tranches of debt, it's going to become a little bit more complicated and you need to calculate the discount rate, which is the weighted average cost of your debt. So in order to calculate that, the first element that you need, you need to have the total um, ending balance or outstanding ending balance of your loan. Okay, so you need that. Then the next thing that you need is basically um, you also need the interest that you have paid during you know, each model period uh, on your different tranches. Okay, so you're going to copy that across. So once you have these two elements, you are left, you know, in order to get this what we call the weighted average cost of debt, you only need to divide the interest, total interest paid during operation by the outstanding amount of debt. And that's going to give you this weighted average cost of debt that you can see here is around 4%, uh, 35 to 3.6% in each model period. Okay. Then the next step is to get the nominator, which is the net present value, right? So in order to get the net present value, we can use the NPV formula, of course, and this is going to be the present value of using the discount rate, which we already calculated, of the future cash flow, right? And you can, of course, you have to fix and lock this last cell, all right? Now that you have this, you can just copy it across. Of course, you can, instead of using the NPV formula, you can also use the, um, you can also not use the NPV formula and you can just basically calculate the discounted, some of the discounted cash flow by just saying that, you know, open parenthesis. Sorry, let me switch to English, my keyboard. Okay, so you can simply say that it's going to be the, future cash flow, the future period cash flow plus what I already discounted and calculated divided by one plus my discount rate in the next period. Okay, that can be also one way of uh, calculating or doing the same thing that we have done with the uh, NPV formula. Okay, so once you have the uh, nominator, uh, now you need to get the denominator, which in our definition, in this definition, the denominator is the outstanding debt balance, okay? So for multiple tranches, you get the sum total of the ending balance of all your tranches. And then the last thing you need to do is to divide the CFADS, present value of cash flow over uh, life of the loan, divided by the outstanding debt amount and you get your LLCR and as you can see here it goes from 1.36 and then it continues and as we repay the loan it's going to become 1.4 and towards the end we end up at 1.8 and 2.4 basically so it has an upward trend okay and one metric summary metric that is always important is to have the minimum of llcr which in this case is 1.34 okay so okay now we know what it is basically the technical definition we went through what is the legal definition and we also looked at it from the 
financial model perspective and of how to calculate it toward these uh, four or five steps. Okay, but what does it really mean, this LLCR? Okay, I, we understood it's the long term, you know, it has a longer term view on the debt service capacity of a project. But I really like, and I did the same thing for the DSCR, and I kind of like this uh, definition of break even. And when it comes to LLCR, it's the same thing as I discussed, you know, during the uh, DSCR calculation is uh, basically the cash buffer that the lenders have for the uh, repayment of their loan. So for example, let me just tell you, I'm going to call it here cash buffer. And I'm going to say my break even point means that at this point in time, meaning when I just start repaying my loan. So I'm going to look at the cash flow available until the end of the life of my loan. And I'm going to say by how much should this cash flow go down so that my I am only left with enough cash to repay the outstanding debt balance. OK, so that reduction is an important information which is going to give confidence to lenders. And that's all about these uh, covenants or threshold that the lenders they put and they say we require a minimum of 1.35. So what does that mean if they require a minimum of 1.36, let's say in this example, or 1.35? This means that the lenders, they say that I want you to make sure that in each model period, I have at least 27 to for 1.35 is around 26. So I have 26% buffer in my cash so that even if the cash flow goes down by 26%, some things happen to the traffic, some things happen to the generation. One of the turbines is just, you know, uh, basically uh, the, the river is not, you know, running as we expected or the sun is not shining as expected. I don't know, whatever. So that, you know, your cash flow goes down by 20%. If it goes on by 20%, you're still okay in terms of the LLCR because you, your threshold is 27%. Okay, so the break-even analysis when it comes to LLCR is also uh, can be interesting concept to consider and when you are interpreting your LLCR and looking at the LLCR rather than just mechanically calculating it and putting it in your financial models and comparing it with your loan agreement and with the threshold. That's good enough. However, why not go beyond and really understand the concept by really going further and understanding them in a much deeper way. And that was basically the aim of this video. I also have a blog post where I cover um, the same thing, but maybe in a different way and in different words. And maybe there are things that I didn't mention here that I cover in my blog post. So yes, that's it for me for today and this video. Uh, my next video, I am not sure what I'm going to cover. Most probably it's going to be about debt sculpting or I don't know. I'm still thinking, so I will let you know. I hope that you follow me and you. I see you in my next video. Thank you and bye.